Um, thanks everyone for having me by today to talk about local food and the work of the Greenest City Local Food Working Group. Very pleased to be here and I have with me my colleague Tegan Adams who's our Greenest City Scholar from UBC who's been working diligently on our, uh, on our um, uh, work program as well. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about what the group has been up to uh, and some of the questions that we've had and the debates and dialogues that we've had that have characterized our meetings. Uh, and um, some of the ideas that we're working on advancing as part of the Greenest City goals. So for those of you who, who may not be familiar with the actual targets and goals that are uh, being contemplated right now, uh, in the Greenest City uh, book we have uh, presented a target, which is a very uh, uh, interesting one, reduce the carbon footprint of our food by 33%, so cut it down by a third. And then a goal, a long-term goal of turning Vancouver into a global leader in urban food systems. Also a very good uh, and interesting thing to, to think about. Uh, and I'd like to tease these part a little bit uh, as, we, as we move through my 10 minute segment here. I should say at the, at the onset, it's kind of a good time to be looking at local food in Vancouver and to be given the task of doing that um, on, on the part of the municipality because food is undergoing a bit of a renaissance right now. There's all sorts of folks that self-describe as foodies and they have blogs and and all sorts of amazing stuff going on in community gardens and farms and everywhere. And there's such an energy around that right now. So the city's work in this regard is actually really cool, really timely, um, and really syncs up nicely with, uh, if you will, the food zeitgeist um, that, uh, that we see in Vancouver and elsewhere uh, in North America. But it is also an interesting time to think about food and to think about what a government can do in food, and particularly local uh, governments as well. Um, amidst all of the, as you can imagine, jurisdictional issues about who does what and how food is contemplated and what role the city can play versus province or health authorities or everything, uh, everyone else. Um, it's also an interesting time to think a little bit about that idea of localism, which characterizes the discussion that we're having here. The chapter in Greenest City right now is on local food. And that's an, an interesting idea in itself because it sounds at, at first blush like a very intuitive um, easy to grasp concept. One of the things I should say that our group has been looking at and, and debating around is how easy is that actually when you think about it? What, what exactly does local mean? Um, we put quotes around it because it's actually a very contextual thing when you, when you try and tease it apart. Um, for example, is local the 100 mile diet? You may remember the book that came out and the, the, the 100 mile a hundred mile um, diet movement that, um, that has been on, undergoing, uh, ongoing in Vancouver for a little while. The bread that you have on the table here uh, is hundred mile bread. There's quite a, a, you know, a lot of thinking into whether or not that classifies itself as local. Or is local provincial maybe? Um, is it something that syncs up with political boundaries? Do we want to support BC farmers when we think about local? Um, if we use the hundred mile metric then we're down into the states and and other, you know, well, I guess nowhere else, but the ocean too, I suppose. Um, but if we use BC, it becomes a bit more of a political entity, which changes the tenor of things a little bit. Um, you know, how, how do you conceptualize it, and what are the end goals you want to do with this idea of local? I should say our food today, I don't know if you can see the green dots on there, we did our best by raiding the local farmer's markets to get stuff that was as close to home as possible. So we have um, the 18 different varieties of heirloom tomatoes, they all come from around Chilliwack, and the cherries and um, apple chips from Summerland, and snap peas from Pemberton. One of the other things, as a, as a side note, that comes out of the discussion on local, which is really interesting, um, which isn't really contemplated in the Greenest City uh, report, is the effect on biodiversity. Because one of the things that's really um, saddening about the way that food production has been uh, unfolding over the last few decades is that there's been a tremendous loss in biodiversity as um, as food crops go uh, into a monocropping industrial food system, which tends to favor a few varieties over many. The local ethos spins that around. So we get people growing 10, 20, 30 different varieties of tomato. We bought a few for you guys to sample today. Makes it a lot easier to do a, a taste test, if you will. What about local low when it comes to things like coffee? What are we supposed to do as a city if we're really interested in promoting local food? Who started their day with a coffee here? Show of hands, please. Anyone not start their day with a uh, oh, oh, okay, well, there you go. For the folks out in the um, internet world, that was about 50-50, but I would say that's, that's a very interesting split. Lots of people start their day with coffee. Lots of food 
is beyond what we would consider local uh, boundaries. Um, olive oil, for example, a lot of things that we use in our processing. Um, processing itself, you know, the definitional stuff um, is, is quite intriguing there because is food that's processed locally the same sort of local as food that's grown locally? Obviously not, but where do you parse these things out? The other challenge I should say that we've had in our, our working group is the idea of locating local amongst other values. So in 2007, um, the Vancouver Food Policy Council and uh, the City Council passed the Vancouver Food Charter, which is a fantastic document. It sets out the principles for what they call a just and sustainable food system. Um, right there in, in, in that sentence, you have a sense of some of the other values that infuse the discussion. The idea of justice, of sustainability, of equitability, of, of equal access to food. Um, local then, if you think about it, has to be conceived as part of a, a, a milieu of, of, of values, of things that, um, that can take local as one component, but not perhaps the sole one. Local food that's produced 10 miles away isn't going to be that good if there's really bad labor practices that go into it, or if it's carbon or fuel intensive. So we have to weigh these things in a variety of different ways. But it is, of course, a very valuable part. Um, I should say one of the other things uh, is that Vancouver has a, a history at the municipality of conceiving of food in a very systems-based approach. We talk about the food system, which is not just the production of food, but the processing, the distribution, the access to food, um, opportunities for eating and celebration, and of course, um, waste and what you do with all of the stuff that comes out of the food system, how you deal with it. We've, um, we've just started, as you know, uh, a waste trimming, uh, a waste collection, food waste collection program that is really going to help us move forward with that. So these are all part of, of the system there. Um, so local has to be located within that. I should say, referencing the, that whole idea of reducing things by 33%, uh, the carbon footprint and um, the whole notion of global leadership and stuff, presents some additional challenges around the idea of what metrics are in food. Because right now, we don't have a really good set of baseline data. Um, some of the other working groups that we have uh, going with the Greenest City program have access to some pretty concrete numbers that they can use to measure change, um, action over time. With the food system, uh, not so much. And also the idea of reducing the food system to one or two numbers poses other interesting challenges too. So these are part of, I guess, the, the debates that are, um, that are flowing through our, our uh, working group right now, the conversations that we're having. But all that being said, I didn't come here today to talk about the anxieties that we're having around semantics or anything like that. I did, I did want to tell you a little bit about where we are going with our food activities, how we're proceeding, uh, and the sort of stuff that we're tackling uh, with, uh, with our work. We're moving ahead with the idea, and this is all draft at this point, and we're you know, getting some fantastic stuff off of the website and great ideas that, that people are, are putting. But as it stands now, we're looking at three, four, five um, key areas. We haven't quite figured out the right number or whether or not some should be classified together, but five key areas, say, uh, where we can talk about um, uh, good, solid strategies that we can do for making Vancouver the greenest city when it comes to, to food. One, perhaps one, no? The clicker's not working, Amanda. Thank you. Um, one is the idea of embedding local in the neighborhood level. So we thought, if we're going to talk about local food, let's really get it to the, the level it counts most. Um, let's really amp up what's happening at, at the local neighborhood level in Vancouver. And one of the things that we're thinking about in this respect is supporting the neighborhood food networks that have started to spring up around the city. For those of you that don't know, there are five in place right now. And these are, I guess to characterize them, say they're coalitions of community organizations, individuals, um, that work together collaboratively to try and achieve common food goals. The point is that by coming together, they're greater than the activities in any one organization. They, they achieve some synergies there. They can really network together, build capacities, uh, and scale up the, um, the work that they're doing at the neighborhood level. As I said, we've got five now, and we've actually supported them under the Greenest City program with the first round of green grants. But there's a number of neighborhoods that don't have them. And so we would like to propose as a strategy the idea of building neighborhood food networks across the city, maybe one for each neighborhood, recognizing, of course, that each neighborhood has different food security needs. Doesn't mean that they all have to have the same type of network. So that's one. 